Okay, so in this uh, little project so far, we've learned how to move the camera, and we've learned how to make uh, rocket fire when we press this button. And of course, it also turns off when we press that button. But that's not what we want the button to do. We want the button to take us into orbit. And that should take a certain amount of time, and maybe some things should happen along the way, like rocket pods falling off, solid rocket boosters falling away, or maybe there's a chance that something goes wrong halfway up. So that's what we're going to program today. I'm going to make an event system. The event systems uh, in, in the newest version of Unity, which I think is still in beta, so you have to choose to go download it, but it's, it's not like locked away or anything. In the newest event system, there's a lot of cool features, and one of them is this event system here. We're us we used it in the past to make this uh, rocket exhaust fire when you pressed a button. Well, it's not limited to the button. We can actually use that same event system internally. The only requirement is that the object, that the class, be a mono behavior. If it's not a mono behavior, then you don't get this neat editor, and you get stuck with this bizarre, you know, full depth editor with lots of pointers. Um, we're not going to use it like that. We're going to use it like this because this is the good way. So let's create a new mono behavior. It's going to be a script. Well, let's call it a Naxa event. Naxa is just the um, working title of this prototype, and I can't call it just a an event because event is taken. Event already means something else. And then we open that up in our mono develop. So Naxa event is a mono behavior. It doesn't actually have to be one except that there are some mono behavior um, editing tricks that we want to use. So we'll leave it as one. Uh, we got to have a couple of things for our Naxa events. First off is the delay. Uh, second off is uh, the uh, thing that we're going to do, the event. So public uh, unity event. Oh wait, there's no unity event. Where Where is it? Where is it? Oh, that's okay. It's, it's not that complicated. Just have to uh, add it into our project. There it is. The unity engine events namespace contains the unity engine events. It's pretty straightforward. And we can name this event whatever we want. How about action? So, we go back into our editor here, and let's add our Naxa event to something, anything. How about uh, this directional light, because it's nice and short so we can see it. We're just testing it out, we're not actually going to be using it for anything just yet. Here you can see that the action is just fine. Let's add an action. Let's make it so that the rocket fires its engines. And there, we have just recreated the same functionality as that button press, but it's not on a button. It's on our own internal script. And that means that we can use it in a lot of other ways, and we can trigger it according to things other than a button press. Obviously, what we're planning to trigger it with is a timer. So let's go ahead and remove this uh, and add in a timer. So we want to create a new class, which we will call a Nexa Event Handler. We could also call it a manager or whatever else pops into your head. Uh, doesn't really matter. We open that up here in our mono develop as well. It is also a mono behavior, um, and we are going to make it have a list of events. Now we have a couple of options. When we want to create a list of things, we can either do it as an array, or we can do it as a list. Uh, the array is kind of annoying to handle in code, whereas the list is really easy to handle in code, so you can add and remove from a list really easily, but for an array you have to recreate it. Um, the list has a lot of overhead, but we're not really worried about overhead at the moment, so let's go ahead and use a list. Now if you don't know the difference between a list and an array, an array is a specific length of memory that is filled with like 10 or you know exactly 10 or exactly 12 or exactly 14 entries. So if we created an array, we would have ex an exact number of entries in a list. Whereas this generic list object is what's called a linked list, which means that there is an entry and then it says, well, the next entry in the list is over there and you go over there and there's another entry and then it says the next one's over there. So it's just this disconnected series of, of data blobs and it doesn't have a set length. And that means that it's slow but it also means that we can add and subtract from it really, really easily. From the perspective of the editor here, no one will ever notice the difference. So if we add to the rocket, we add this event handler. 
our events look exactly like whether whether it's a list or an array it's going to look exactly like this over here in the inspector the only time it's going to matter is when we're editing it in code and adding and subtracting things in code because they behave differently in code uh, if you're confused about it don't worry about it too much if you just follow along with what I'm doing you won't get lost this is a generic list this says okay well it's no longer a generic list it's now a list of Nexa events and you have to include the generic collections because it is a generic list. Straightforward enough, right? So here in our update, what we're going to do is we are going to let time elapse and we are going to simply trigger the next event every single time time elapses. But this is not actually a good thing to do an update. What you can do here is update is you could have like, uh, you know, some sort of a variable uh, like timer uh, in the in the class and you could say, well, timer plus equals time dot delta time if timer is uh, greater than um, max time then call the next that's how a lot of people do it and that's not a very good way to do it the best way to do it is to simply use uh, uh, the the coroutine functionality so here in start this is where we're gonna put it and what we're gonna do is we're gonna say for int a equals zero a is less than oh, oh we're just gonna sorry we're just gonna say um, start coroutine and then we were gonna start up the name of our coroutine what should we call this how about uh, run events. Now run events doesn't exist yet, but it's not that hard to make exist. All I have to do is uh, uh, create the correct function, which um, I always forget the name of the uh, uh, thing. It's a... Well, you know what we can do. We can make it a void and it'll tell us what it's supposed to be. I enumerator. I could never remember that. I, I don't know why. There we go. So here in I enumerator, what we do is a for int a equals zero, a is less than events dot count. The other big difference between arrays and lists is that you use dot count in a list and you use um, dot length in an array. Very minor differences. And here, what we're going to do is we're going to pause for however long that event says it should be paused for, and then we're going to continue. So in order to pause, we use another function. Um, and I'm actually going to go ahead and look that up here on my left-hand window, uh, which we're going to look up in here. Unity, um, I enumerator, uh, wait. Yeah, there it is. Yield, wait, hmm. No, that's a JavaScript, isn't it? Yeah, that's JavaScript, I need it in C Sharp. No, this is obsolete. Sorry about that. I don't use this very often because you only have to program it once right at the very beginning of your project and then you never have to touch it again. So uh, I guess it is yield return new wait for seconds and then we do uh, events a dot delay. And this here will pause the execution. So afterwards we can actually just trigger the event. like so. So what this says is uh, when we start go into this coroutine. In this coroutine start at event 1 wait for the amount of seconds it says once you're done waiting invoke it then go to the next event wait for the amount of seconds it says once you're done invoke it. It's a very very simple simple setup pretty straightforward. So let's go ahead and uh, march back into our uh, inspector here. We've got the event handler, but we don't have any events set up for it yet. We've got to put some events in here. So let's just add them to this particular object. Now normally the events that we would be creating would not be mono behaviors. I don't like the fact that they're mono behaviors, but if I don't make them mono behaviors, this doesn't happen. So we're gonna leave them as mono behaviors. We could, I could teach you how to make this available to non mono behaviors, but let's put that aside. So what we're going to do is we're going to add in uh, our rockets, um, 
a rocket engine. I, I think I could just drag it down. Yeah, there we are. We're going to add in our rocket engine toggle rocket exhaust here uh, with a delay of one. And then what we're going to do is well, we're going to add in another NAXA event with a delay of 10. And we're going to do the exact same thing. Oh, we did create one. Uh, I hope you can't hear the sound of my landlady in the background. She's being really loud for some reason. All right, so we've just said at one second, fire the rockets. After 10 more seconds, toggle them again, meaning turn them off. So we're going to go over into that button. Here it is. And previously we had said when you press the button, fire the rockets. And instead what we're going to say now is when you press the button, trigger the event handler. Now the thing is that right now uh, we have it so that the event handler is on and that means that if we look here start, start crew routine, run events. So we've got two options. We can either turn the event handler off and then turn it on when we press the button or we can move this to a triggering mechanism. So let's go ahead and uh, move it to a triggering function. Public void uh, start executing. So when we go back out here, we can change this to next event handler, start executing. There you go. And now it will execute the new system that we created rather than just use that one, that one action in our uh, button. So let's go ahead and move our camera so we can see it and press the button. Oh, it errored out. Oh, that's because I forgot to actually add them. So this is the reason that I wanted to make them non... Um, I didn't want them to be here because I wanted them to be in here. And now that I've put them down here, I have to remember to add them to this list manually. We could also search through them, but there's no guarantee that they would be in the right order. So for now, manually adding. Adding them manually is easiest. Um, this is a bit of a, uh, I won't say it's a total kludge, but this is a non-ideal way to handle the information. Uh, it's good if you are just beginning or just fleshing out a prototype, but in the long run, this is going to get uh, ugly. So you're going to want to come up with a better way to handle it. Uh, and there are a lot of better ways to handle it. But for now, this will work fine, and it will only collapse when your game gets large enough to make you cry tears of blood. All right, so let's move it, and let's fire it up. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, bink. I was counting real fast. So that's how you can do some timing stuff, and that's very, very straightforward. I'm just going to go through the files again, because there are not very many of them. So we go over here into a monodevelop. We've got two new classes, the Nexa event and the Nexa event handler. The names don't mean anything. You can call them whatever you want. Just don't call them event or event handler, because those are taken. In the event, we just have an action that gets taken and a number of seconds for the delay. We have to include the event's namespace, or it won't know what we're talking about. In the events handler, we've got a list of events. We could also make it an array of events. It doesn't matter. And then we have a function that starts up the coroutine. And then we have a coroutine that goes through each of the events, waits for the delay, and then invoke, invokes the event. This is very, very straightforward, very, very easy. And one of the things to realize is that there is no protection in this. So when we execute it, we can keep executing it and they'll all execute simultaneously. So now we have several event handlers all running like a quarter of a second after each other. So uh, if you wanted to prevent that, you'd have to put in some kind of gating, and that would be very easy to do. You could just go and uh, like have a thing here that says, uh, uh, I'm running, I'm running equals true, and then not run if you're already running. But that's not what I would like at the moment. This is plenty, and I hope that this has taught you how to use the new event system and the IE numerators, and hopefully uh, coroutines make a little bit more sense.